species of antelope that uh, lives on the Arabian Peninsula in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia, Oman, Jordan, kind of that region of the world. Um, they're related to the other antelope species that you see in down south into Africa itself. This is a, a lot more vegetation than they actually have in the region of the world where they live. Our climate is perfect for these guys. So we actually got the original importation of animals from that Operation Oryx rescue that happened in the early 1960s and the first Oryx came to the Phoenix Zoo in 1963. And not a lot was known about them at the beginning. We didn't even really know how long their gestation was, um, what their social structures and behaviors were, so it was really learning the basics of the animals. So it was a little nerve-wracking, you know, there was literally only a handful of them and we didn't even really understand much about them. They don't need a lot of water, um, they can go fairly long amounts of time in between drinking compared to the other antelope. These guys walk on sand um, and they would tend to sink into the stand so their hooves are actually wider, kind of a little more of a snowshoe shape um, that helps them walk on that soft sand surface. Oryx do live together in groups, they'll be males and females, um, and they do have sort of a social hierarchy amongst the group. Um, and they will use those horns, the males will use them to fight with each other for access to the females, the females will use them to sort of establish dominance within the social hierarchy of the group. So really most of their use is for sparring with each other more than anything else. Their, their first response to a predator is going to be to see it a long distance away and avoid it if they have to run away. It really would be a last ditch thing to have to use their horns to defend themselves, but really all that's left in those areas um, that's a threat to them by and large is people, and that's the, the main the main predator of and threat to oryx in the world today. The good news for them is we're at the point where the numbers have gotten up high enough worldwide that uh, in 2011 they're status, their endangered status got downgraded from critically endangered to vulnerable. So that's a sign that overall um, those population numbers are doing much better than they were, um, but they're still not, you know, you can't ever stop paying attention because as we've seen, you know, it, it doesn't take much for them to become threatened again.